today I'm going to machine a front axle for a customer of mine. Uh, he's doing a modification to the front end of a bike and sent me in the front axle. Now, uh, what he wants me to do is increase the length of this axle by one inch and also make a new sleeve here and increase this uh, length, this inner length here, which is about one and three eighths, up to 43 millimeter, which is what this one is. Uh, the new f the new fork lowers is using are have a, a 43 millimeter clamp width, and of course they're one inch wider apart. Uh, I made up a couple drawings here. I did a just a reference drawing here, so I know so I knew what to work off of. Uh, and that's this existing assembly here, and I didn't draw multiple views. I just drew each part plus the assembly drawing. Uh, fairly straightforward, nothing complicated, so I didn't mess with it. Uh, here's the new one. You see the difference between the two. Um, this has a partially supported area where the thread goes in. Only goes in about three quarter of an inch. Now the new one, I'm bringing the threads out, and making it fully supported. Uh, being it's aluminum and I'm extending the length out to 43 millimeter I didn't want that unsupported like in the first drawing so I extended the steel core out to meet the aluminum just to as a safety margin uh, so anyway so there's it, an extra inch here and I'm not sure what it is here about another half inch so there's quite a bit more material involved with this this axle another thing too is this thing is hollow. In fact, that ID is a little bit larger than three quarter of an inch. Um, I have to make the wall thickness a little bit. Um, well, I haven't done the calculation yet, but I have to do the wall thickness a little bit bigger on this to make sure it has enough strength uh, to handle the stress of the um, the increased unsupported area. So. Uh, I'll cross that bridge when I get to it. But anyway, let's get to set up. And um, oh, and I got the material here. This is chrome moly steel, high tensile strength. I think this is, uh, I forget what they said. I think it's 130,000 psi. Um, this is 7075. This is um, the highest strength aluminum you can get. And I believe this is around 60,000 psi. So it's maybe 20,000. 22,000 psi higher than 6061 T6 is which what I usually use for projects so uh, I want it to be a real strong components being it's on a motorcycle axle so let's get started here and um, fairly straightforward project nothing nothing weird have to cut some internal and external threads like I said it's uh, fairly straightforward so let's uh, get the lathe set up and get turning here
Okay, so that's done. I'm going to clean these up a little bit, take any burrs off. They're fairly smooth now, but just put a, a lead in angle on them and make them look nice, clean them up a little bit more. And after I'm finished with this, I have to make the nut out of aluminum or the uh, threaded sleeve that I talked about earlier. <laughs>
looks pretty nice. And this is the strongest aluminum you can get, at least as far as I know. 7075, they use these on hang glider, use this stuff on hang glider fittings, aircraft parts. Okay, so here's the finished piece. Uh, fairly straightforward is motorcycle axle for the uh, front wheel. Uh, just a brief explanation, uh, of course, you know about the part is this is the clamping area. This goes uh, clamps on the uh, the fork sliders. This is a clamping surface, and then here's another clamping surface. This is the threaded sleeve. And remember when I was turning this, we were concerned about the threads being a little bit tight. Uh, but like I mentioned, or at least I think I mentioned, usually you get a little bit of burrs in there you have to clean up and work the threads into place. Uh, it goes on very readily now, quite readily. Uh, it works good. It's, there's really no noticeable play in here. And that's fairly important because it's a front axle. You really don't want a lot of slop in those threads. Like whenever uh, this gets clamped onto the motorcycle on it's you know a clamp onto the forks like on each side like this so if you have a lot of slop in these threads this this um, axle has the would have the ability to be able to move quite a bit in those threads and then of course I'll give you a lot of play in your front tire and you really don't want that so those need to be tight tolerance threads uh, so they turned out really well and that was supposed to be flush there but then I made it just a little bit thicker on this end on that flange this, of course, is the hex form here, and this is where the wrench or the hex key goes to, you know, to tighten up the nut on the end. And this is a 22 millimeter cross flats. Now, I don't have the key here, but it's a multi-tool. It's like one side had 17 millimeters and 22, and one side had 19 and 24. I needed to put 17 millimeter clearance down in here. Uh, that's the way the original axle was, too, so... I'm not concerned over strength at all. And another thing I did too is I put clearance here in each corner. Of course, when you're working with an end mill, you can't make the, uh, at least with a, you know, a vertical milling operation, you can't make the corners sharp without using a brooch uh, or using an EDM or something like that. So what I did is I just pushed the uh, tangent of the, uh, the end mill I was using out to the theoretical sharp corner of these intersecting lines and so that allows you to put a hex tool in there that would have sharp corners. Now, the tool that he has actually had flats in the corners, but I couldn't measure them, so I just put in full clearance on each corner. And it's hollow. I had to do some calculations, stress calculations, to make sure that, um, being this was a little bit longer, I couldn't make it the same wall thickness as the old axle. Uh, so I had to make it somewhat heavier to support the longer, the, um, the uh, increased length of this axle. So I did that and I made the stresses a little bit lower, deflection a little bit lower just to be on the safe side, put some uh, uh, safety margin in there. But anyway it turned out nice. I'm happy with the thread too, all the tolerance has come out well. Turned out nice, now I just need to get it wrapped up and back to my customer.